Well, well, we've all heard of the that exercise that is supposed to inspire creativity. I think it's like a, a I don't know what it's called, but it's something like a literary shit where you just write for eight minutes uh, non-stop, just without, you know, just continuously writing. And then after that, I think people usually do it at the beginning of a day to sort of get, maybe it's to get all the bad words out of the system. You know what I mean? It's nice to start the day with a shit. And so you feel lighter. You've got rid of any um, waste that was lingering around. Um, that maybe led to an uncomfortable sleep, who knows. But it's just a case of, yeah... But that's, yeah, that's beside the point. The, the the exercise is just eight minutes of non-stop talking. And afterwards, you sort of like, who knows how you feel. But you've actually, um, oh no, not, not talking, writing. So I'm thinking that what, what why not make it the, the, the holy trini- trini- trinity? Um, eight minutes, because I've just woken up, as you can sort of tell, you know, stringing words together to make a sentence is proven a little bit challenging but that's the whole point of um, using my speech faculty for eight minutes non-stop I'm like it's training it isn't it you're morning training um, it's a muscle everything's a muscle which gets better as you sort of use it so gradually at the end of this I should be noticeably there should be a noticeable improvement in the way that I'm able to coordinate my <laughs> words and speech, words into speech even. Um, so, yeah, the exercise was, has been, as taught to me, was non-stop writing for eight minutes, but I thought I'd just improve upon that to make it before the start of each day have 24 minutes like in the way people might do 20 minutes of yoga before the start of the day if we do 24 minutes of broken down into three eight minute sections eight minutes of non-stop continuous writing eight minutes of non-stop continuous speaking and eight minutes of non-stop continuous reading that would be, I mean, the listen you can use, you constantly do anyway throughout the day. So that's, that's not, that's not, that's just, that's the thing that we, we get practice in each day anyway. But the reading aspect elements, I guess we do on the, with the internet, but continue, you know, maybe you could, you could um, make it so it's reading of a text which is maybe is perhaps not particularly um, very easy to to take in. Could be a bit challenging, you know. Usually, it's internet headlines, Google News headlines to see what the latest in the world is, and see what's going down, and and see whether we're only one step closer to nuclear war. Which is what everyone is thinking about these days. It's the only hot topic. Well, there is, there's a lot of hot topics, but that surely has got to the annihilation of everyone. Has got to be pretty. It's got to be riding pretty high up there. And so the and so the headlines and the texts are things that we just continuously are able to digest. There are no challenging words there. There are no you know, difficult ideas or concepts to understand, unless we're reading something which is, you know, quite sciencey, quite futuristic based, could be some Dostoevsky, who knows, Um, you might want to do that, but that's what, and I guess this is the eight minute section of the continuous speaking, which I'm trying to just, just carry it on going, but as you can tell, the quality of what are the... It's it's clear that I've run out of actual substance and... 
as I've already conveyed the the general idea, the gist of this general idea, I've suddenly decided that I may as well use this part of the day as my eight minute continuous uh, speech or monologue, if you want to call it that. But, you know, at a certain point you just start to go round and round or you struggle your way forward trying to <laughs> guarantee that everything that's said is sounding fairly original, like something you've not said before. But you can't really get away from the recycling of ideas, going back and round, uh, rephrasing, I'm just paraphrasing yourself in order to sort of fill out time, which is okay at first, but then after a while it gets a little bit grating. And so you need to just change the subject and the topic of conversation altogether. So it's at this point I'd like to talk about picnic baskets and how I know little, so little about them. But I'm aware of and do have good friends with um, amazing sort of basket weaving skills. Uh, it's an, I don't know whether it's an ancient art, whether it is, but it's definitely, I mean, they're the type of people who remind me of pagans. They remind me of, you know what I mean, like ye olde, maybe Morris dancers as well. But they've got a traditional, um, a ye olde traditional vibe about them. Uh, maybe they don't vaccinate the kids. Uh, maybe they they don't have, have kids actually. No, they will. We they will have kids. It's just the literally, you know, they remind. It's just what springs to mind is a an amalgam of amalgamation of stereotypes um, but it is true that they are great basket weavers and so bas picnic baskets is no trouble at all for them um, they actually take it to the next level and make sculptures out of that the the thread what is the thread in some sort of cane in picnic baskets what is the thread that they use to weave their fabric it's very thick fabric that can hold all that jam and conserve and all those delicacies that we take out with us um, for a summer picnic um, I don't know what that thread is but it's very is it straw but it's very it's very tough stuff uh, do you know what that is, and I'm just looking down now, and as soon as I look at the how long this has lasted for, it says <clears throat> eight minutes. So that's me done for the first stint, and now on to uh, parts two and three, which I'll probably just read out here as well, because it'll be uh, part of the exercise. Okay. Oh, well, just here is my eight minutes of brain shit. Um, Hef, half, hoff, and try to speak to my desperate housewife who fanned the flames, surrogate to the winding refin of time and conscience, flailing about the winter desert and flying aloft the looping canopy of doom and glooming and swooping trees counter to the fairy lights and night bright drightings and sighting alighting over yonder in squeaky cleaning. The third chapter starts with ever so much of a candle bright lit tunnel going descending Brian. The storm that brought the weather back from normality did not seem as I thought it would be and deceased friends told me off for being a brute and speaking cute phrases to my priest who was very gay. Squash sometimes smells of a cranky pasty and fled the scene and fearing the connotations of swimming and owl shit, he took his child from the depths and got her to a place of safety, which was, for want of a better word, tasty. Should I not go with you or shall I stay with them? Decisions, decisions is what usually comes to mind, but not this time, as I was fully prepared for the onslaught that was to leave me feeling violated for the next six months. 
The judge took me by the hand and led us down a narrow corridor that was filled with junipers and lupins sent by the king. My lord, I think one would like to fast on a tulip and dine on a cockroach, said the driving instructor. Indeed, one does seem quite unkempt for a boarding servant. And where did you fetch that poor donkey? From first thing in the morning, it is terribly unfashionable for you to flee the scene and tell your mother that my enduring love for her chicken feed is not very becoming of me. How dare you speak of such a travesty of justice, me lord. The fourth scene begins with a teary-eyed Tommy Tootit who lost all his betting money on a, on a donkey named on a monkey named Albert. Albert, he thought, could run very fast, but the truth was that he could only run very slow. He should not have entered him in a horse race or the dog race or the rabbit race either. At this stage, I thought about the nearing of the eight minutes and my typing pace face turned faster as I thought I could type my way into the future, which with each successive event... How do people whose minds work so fast talk with such calmness? How do they do it? I want to stop, but the timer has not stop, started bleeping because I forgot to set one. So therefore, I shall just have to stop. Um, so, yeah, that's the speaking part and that's the writing part. I'm not going to... Speak. I'm not going to read for eight minutes because I've j I had to read out that absolute guff that I wrote down the first time. So I'm not going to. I can't be. I can't be. No, I've already done. It. I feel like I've done it, and that's it. So, um, but I feel I do feel a lot better for um, having done the, especially the eight minutes writing. I feel like there was this amazing, like the 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 mechanism, the the system, the infrastructure of the brain. To make sense of the world and try and translate it is 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 up and running now, and it's still quite early. It's still early in the morning for me, anyway. It's not for a lot of other people, but this feels like I'm up quite early. So yeah, it would be nice to be able to think that I could do this every day before going out into the world. Um, probably not. It's, it'll probably just be a one uh, one day fad. But of all the things, the the reading you do that sort of anyway listening you do that anyway uh speaking you don't usually speak for eight minutes continuously like forcing yourself to just continue like that without a pause for breath and just the it's that cut it's cut that continuity which makes it worthwhile the ability to sort of think on the feet and just keep it going it's just about keeping things going and ideas wise i guess with writing and because of the slower pace that the brain is actually speech speech um speech is almost faster than the brain you almost struggle to sort of make the the, the quality of the content good because the the mouth is equally um it's just fine keeping up with the brain uh, so the brain is just like, oh fuck, I need to really be on my A game. But the hands, the hands is, uh, uh, can't keep up with the brain. And so the content tends to be of a higher quality because the brain has time to, to think while the hands sort of catch up. So that's that's probably why the I found the writing a lot, a lot better, a lot more helpful, useful. Um, so that's it. That's enough. That's enough. I don't want this to be another eight minutes of absolute guff. But that was half an hour all in all. 24 minutes with a little bit of like time to make up for, you know, mistakes and things that happens in the middle. But all in all, very worth it. And comparing the way I sound now to how I started when I first um, pressed record on the recorder. I don't know. I haven't listened to the original recording, but I hazard to guess that I sound just slightly more, uh, I was going to say, I was going to say com comprehensive. No, that's, just, that's not what I mean. See, just at that sort of moment, everything falls apart. So, hmm, I'm going to go.